Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. So in those days, you didn't have to be that particular. You sat next to someone that knew something. You watched TV, you heard my conference call, you heard Dan talk, you, you had enough to deal with. You're like, you know, we would trade a million, two million shares a day then. Sure. And even with the commissions, you know, what were you paying, three cents, Dan? Killing it. <laughs> I was paying three cents and I was a partner. And, I and, you, still, and you still made that. And I still was. 30000 a month in commissions. <laughs> yeah, commission, it was like nothing. Oh, you know what I'm it was, it was, it was a great time. You didn't fight for commissions. The, oh. the moves were It wasn't like you were making 1% a day. Sure. You were making 10% on five stocks a day. 51 day we're talking about. Hey, guys. Good morning, everybody, and happy Memorial Day weekend. Hope everybody is having a fabulous start to their long Memorial Day weekend. God bless uh, all the people who made this uh, weekend, I guess, possible. It's maybe some poor, poor source of words. We thank you again for all your services. Obviously, uh, we're not here if it wasn't for the people to make uh, the ultimate uh, sacrifices. So God bless you. God bless uh, all your families. Hopefully everybody is doing well. If you are brand new uh, to the channel, please like, share, uh, subscribe. We would love to uh, share our journey, our thoughts on this uh, wonderful journey of longevity through uh, unbiased technical analysis. So let's get into today, right? So. For all you guys who are watching this um, the video for the first time, again, welcome aboard. Thank you for your viewership. Um, I started trading all the way back in 1999 in a place called uh, Generic Trading. And um, I was very, very fortunate enough to um, be sitting near, well, near, right next to, uh, within five feet away. I could pretty much touch him, touch the top of his yarmulke. Uh, Meyer Offman, uh, one of the greatest traders of all time. You can Google him, uh, just a phenomenal trader. Uh, his partner Ron Shear again a lot of uh, a lot of um, you know a lot of mentorship back then uh, when I was 24 25 years old and gonna be 49 uh, in about 10 days um, and the greatest part about that time was not only the, the you know the, the great camaraderie that everybody shared being on the desk you know joining you know creating bonds creating relate like you know less uh, life relationships uh, it was a great time to grow up in the most incredible most aggressive era and uh, at that time, uh, it was the dot-com era. If you guys remember, uh, a lot of people think of the dot-com era as being around for years and years and years. The dot-com era uh, was basically from 1999 to the middle of 2001. That's it. It was about, you know, it was about, what, 15, 18 months uh, with very, very, you know, huge aggression. But uh, during that time, uh, we saw, you know, what we thought was once-in-a-lifetime type of market, you know, stocks going you know, from $7 to, to 600, splitting six times within that e year and a half. I mean, look at, look at any charts like Amazon, uh, anything, you know, anything during that time, just split like three, four times within two years. Um, and it was, it was just phenomenal. And, and we believed at that time that it was us, right? We were doing something special. And I've never hid the fact, I got very, very lucky. Nobody that I knew knew how to trade, okay? It, you could convince yourself you traded that time. You can convince yourself that you knew what you were doing. You could convince others that how smart you are. But the moral of the story was stocks were on steroids, okay? If there was a performance enhancing drug test, every single company that was trading at that time uh, would get violated, right? Some sort of, some sort of uh, penalty against their performance in, in nature because stocks are just going out of their minds. Generational moves, real generational moves. And if you watch this interview, you know, well, again, one of, the, one of the best things that ever happened to me was being at the right place at the right time. Uh, when I was with Generic Trading in 1999, we had the temporary offices in Park Avenue South. Then we moved down uh, downtown uh, to one Seaport Plaza. Then we finally moved back uh, to Midtown to, to, uh, to uh, the Radio City Musical Building. And we started with 10 people. There was 10 people there. And by the time uh, Generic was sold to, Car Generic Carlin was sold to the Royal Bank of Canada, they had 3,000 traders, 2,500, 3,000 traders. So I watched the whole business grow up. And if you remember that time, for all you guys that did trade, anything you bought, the market was forgiving. 
absolutely forgiven. You didn't need to need to have the greatest exit entry to be right because that's how strong the market is. And if you watch this clip, uh, Kyler is going to post. Uh, it's the only video interview that Meyer Offman had. We we were very very fortunate. Me and Meyer uh, connected years and years ago. Uh, once again, uh, and unfortunately, he passed away uh, a few years ago. Uh, but we you know we sat down uh, with the guys. Uh, from this Lucci group, shout out to St. Lucci. Uh, and he basically told the story of what happened during that time. The reason why I bring it up, it's very, very similar, okay? Very, very similar to what we've seen in the last two weeks. What we've seen now in the last two weeks is abnormal, okay? Stocks that usually would put in a two, three dollar range on the, a very specific interval are putting in five, 10, 15, 20 dollar moves within the course of 12 hours, okay? That's not us, okay? There's nothing that I have done different in the last two weeks that I've done in the last 12 years that I've done in the last 24 years, more or less, that I'm doing something different to making these extraordinary moves in these stocks. It's the stock market, guys. And I see a lot of people, you know, pumping out their chest and they're talking like they just invented fire. It's not us, I guarantee it. If you've been trading Tesla, like I've been trading Tesla, especially aggressively in the last eight years, you know that Tesla doesn't put in these great, great moves every single day. You know NVIDIA doesn't put up a $100 candle every single day. You know that Amazon doesn't go, you know, doesn't go up $7. $7 pre place split is like $240 move in two days. It just doesn't happen. And, and I think a lot of times going into this weekend, people are making a, a very, very big mistake without subconsciously even knowing it. They're putting themselves on a pedestal that they think they can't do wrong. Eventually, like all markets, okay, this type of aggressive nature is going to end. I hope not, okay? I hope we still are talking about this on Monday, on Tuesday, next Thursday, next Groundhog's Day, right? I hope this lasts as long as possible. But I have, a, you know, I have a history of stock markets just stopping and, and just going into full contraction mode. I don't care about if they go down, but full contraction mode. And what we're seeing now is the ultimate, the absolute ultimate of exaggeration of average true range. It's absolutely phenomenal. I don't think anybody's going to, anybody is going to be, uh, you know, is going to be, uh, you know, really upset with what's going on when we're seeing this action. But calm down, take a breath. It's not us. I give you my word. It's not us. The same channel that you could identify for Tesla two weeks ago was the same channel you could identify Tesla on Friday. Friday's results are probably going to be four times, five times bigger than it were two, three weeks ago because that's the kind of the market is. So this weekend, yes, if you did great uh, over the last couple of weeks, enjoy it, right? Enjoy it. Feel good about it, okay? Because what we have as traders, the only thing we have is our confidence and our process. And when they mesh, usually good things are going to happen. So this is a wonderful thing. But just keep in mind, take off the rose-colored glasses, you know, remove the blinders, and just realize that this is where the, right now the byproducts of an extraordinary market, okay? When it's going to end, I, again, I hope it doesn't, right? But I know the truth, okay? We all know the truth. We've been trading for a long, long time. We know the ramification of what happens when it stops and when it does you're not going to be very, very happy. It's like a drug addict, right? It's like that drug addict, a heroin addict, chasing that next high, chasing that next high. When they come back from the euphoria, they, they can't find that next high, right? And, and then ultimately they, they start burning and crashing. We don't want that anybody to do that, okay? So every single day that you come in, have your game plan, right? Like my, my, the constant message I've always talked about was having a game plan, having a game plan on both sides. Don't guess, don't have an opinion, see which side confirms, and usually good things are going to happen. Well, this type of market, great things are happening and it's fantastic. But again, check your ego at the door. You didn't, you know, you, you didn't solve uh, the, you know, the cure for, for blindness. You didn't solve, you know, the, the cure, you know, for, for flying, uh, you know, for, 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 you know, for cancer. Check yourself at the door. Be humble. Stay humble. This business is so damn aggressive. When the market gods turn on you, you don't want to be that guy. Okay. Enjoy it while it lasts. But more important, guys, just take it one day at a time, one trade at a time. So let's talk about the tape ridiculous right end of message end of video hope everybody has a great weekend but all jokes aside absolutely ridiculous everything is ripping uh the hardest part going into this week is you know not chasing the stocks up up 27 dollars right the hardest part is finding setups and we'll get to some setups that are coming off the bottom remember the biggest moves are always off the bottom off the middle channels and the stocks that are runaway trains i, I know people are holding runners on you know, different things this week, NVIDIA, Amazon, Tesla, whatever the case may be, 
the point is again, always remember it will end, right? Just always remember that it will end. And the last thing you want to do is start chasing stocks up three weeks above their pivot points, three weeks above their breakout levels. And if you avoid that, okay, and you really look at the market on a day to day basis, you should be fine. So going into this week, again, um, you know, you want to hopefully the gravy train keeps on going. Again, it's very, very hard for me to to uh, you know to talk about you know how, how many how, how many more hyperboles can I use about this market? I can sit there for for four hours talking about this, but the point is it's an aggressive market. Let's hope it continues. Uh, any week openings, obviously, we're looking for uh, the strongest stocks to buy on dips. Uh, the Nvidia's of the world, the Teslas of the world. Marvel had an absolutely phenomenal run. Workday uh, had a huge earnings quarter. You have Tesla that's you know ready, you know maybe a day or two away from ready again. Again, we just need to get above this whole thing, man. If we if this market just continues, and we've been have some phenomenal pivots on Tesla, but if this market continues, we could just get above this whole channel here. You see this this whole channel here, uh, a close above 205. I think it might get a little bit of resistance here around 200, 202 area. But man, oh man, if this week, if if Tesla could finally be, you know, just completely sprung loose above this 205 close with this type of environment, God knows, man, we could have some epic, epic uh, events uh, in our in our, uh, in our our near future. So hopefully uh, that continues. Uh, other than that, okay, other than that, what's going on, right? So we have the debt ceiling, uh, McCarthy, Biden. Uh, I've been saying this now for two weeks. Now that the focus is pretty much off earnings, we're going to debt ceiling talk. Look, I, I've been hearing about this debt ceiling talk ever since I started trading. The debt ceiling has always been uh, has always been raised. Nobody wants a default. That's number one. And also, again, we're going into election year. Whether you're a Democrat or Republican, if you're a Biden supporter, you think this guy is, wants the, the 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 country to default. That's what he's going to run on. For 2024, I'm the president who let the country default. So a deal is going to get done. The fact that they're talking about, well, you know, there's some sticking points. The deal is going to get done. Okay. Nobody wants this. Nobody sees it happening. Especially it's not good for business if you are running for re-election uh, next, uh, next November. So it's not going to be a pretty thing if we do default. And this is going to be the guy who finally uh, makes everything uh, cave in. We'll see. You know, we'll see what happens that. Other than that, earnings are pretty much uh, done deal. Um, you know, the moves that we're seeing are just supernova. Uh, NVIDIA, just absolutely monster, absolute monster. I mean, maybe one more, one or two more consolidation. Uh, if it can start getting above the earnings high this, this week, you, know, you could see a push to four, you know, four tens, four twenties. Uh, they're coming with massive, massive option flow all the way, uh, all the way through. Uh, Amazon has just been an absolute rock star. Apple is broken out. I mean, millions of times over. Microsoft is just going absolutely insane. Anything with the word AI is going absolutely insane. You can see AI is getting close to its, uh, close to its January, February, March, April. Uh, April 3rd highs for a massive breakout there. Even a stock like Oracle. When was the last time we talked about Oracle? Look what Oracle did on NVIDIA's AI, right? Everybody's into AI just the same way everybody was into COVID testing. Everybody was into Bitcoin mining. Now everybody's into AI. God bless. Anything to make life easier is a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing. Um, I think the most important part of going into this week is, and I know there's some always data coming out, I think watch the tendency of the stocks the same way that we recognize stocks were getting tired. Remember a couple of days ago, well, last week we were talking about an exhaustion cycle that we potentially had a potential uh, pullback, which we finally did, right? An exhaustion cycle. Start looking, the, the, the biggest clues this week is the leaders. If they start stalling out and we start putting in lower highs, right, in con consecutive days, it's not that the stock is 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 uh, going to go down. It just wants to rest a little bit, no matter how how aggressive or not aggressive it gets pulled. So keep an eye on that as well. Uh, we do have uh, data coming out uh, this week. We also have the Fed uh, coming out uh, sooner than later. It feels like they're coming out every single day, every single minute. Uh, but the point is, again, guys, just trust me. I've been there where the euphoria ends and the bubble pops and the champagne is uh, has been drunk, uh, has been drank, and there's nothing left, right? And it's a horrible, horrible feeling if you're not prepared for it. So the most important part is... Put yourself in a situation and just taking it one trade at a time, one day at a time, and not long anything uh, that is overextended. One bit piece of news before we go on to uh, some ideas that I like for this week and the pivots from Friday. Uh, this three days, the Memorial Day weekend, guys, uh, we are running our uh, our special trial. It's only 47 bucks. The whole 30, you could test drive, kick the tires 
uh, for the PS60 theory and the pivots and all that great stuff that comes with it in the live webinar. Uh, and again, I, I really do think every trader needs to find their sweet spot. It, you know, it, it could be the common form of pivots. It could be common form of crypto, small caps, make up whatever the case may be. But again, I think you deserve to at least get yourself exposed to everything. And these three days through, uh, I think through Monday, it's a special, special uh, sale here. So if you are interested, it's only 47 bucks, guys. Come check it out. See if it's the right fit for you. I promise it's not a fit for everybody. Uh, but if you are a patient trader uh, and you are uh, very attention detail, uh, it could be something really, really cool and you'll really enjoy uh, the ramifications when it gets uh, started. So that's that. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about some pivots from Friday. Again, as you can imagine, just everything went bananas. Uh, Tesla 187 needs to build. Tesla went bananas, right? So it took out the 187, took out the 87, reclaimed the five day. Not only did it reclaim the 187, the five day, it reclaimed last week's highs of 193 and went all the way up to 9860s again. I think it needs to clear out. I think it needs to a close above 20. For, for this thing to really get going, I mean, supernova-esque, I think this thing needs to close around 204, 205 to really get this going. Let's see if we can get there, but fantastic move on Friday. Uh, Apple, again, went nuts. Uh, 174 needs to build. Funny thing is Apple hasn't even taken out the previous week's highs. I actually like Apple uh, going into this week, uh, but again, it took out that 74 uh, traded up to almost 76. I love that, you know, look, watch the last week's highs on Apple. If it goes, it could get stretched out. A bunch of uh, 77 and a half and 80 calls were trading. Uh, NVIDIA, this was awesome. Uh, 83.50 rejected twice for experienced traders. Needs to build a couple ways to play it. This, uh, you know, 373 remount, which I never got to, which sucks. I wanted to bounce it off the 373 level, got to 375. But this 83.50, 84 was great. Uh, and here was the 60 minute view. And this is what we talk about part of this PS60 theory, the sneaky pivots, right? So you see this whole area here, right? You see this candle here, pre-market, 383.45. The next candle here, 383.49. That's where I got the 383.50, got rejected twice. So once got it got above the 83.50, just absolutely exploded. Uh, and the video went all the way up to uh, almost 92. Huge, huge move on the video. Just phenomenal action. Uh, Coinbase, we were watching to the downside, never got there. Uh, Marvel went absolutely nuts. Talk about a gap and go in this environment on earnings. Uh, earnings gap, 50, 59, 40, and 60. It needs to confirm for the next leg up. Here is Marvel. So let me show you the 60-minute chart, right? So here is the here is the 59, 40. You see these two candles here, right? Here is the 59, 40, the pre-market highs. Here was 60, the after-hours highs. It cleared out everything. And, well, you see what happened to the stocks. Went absolutely nuts. Again, everything went nuts. Uh, workday 217 needs to confirm. Only ran up about a couple of bucks, but I still like Workday. Uh, good consolidation. Uh, but you can see here, it took out this whole channel here. Only ran up a couple of bucks, but I still like it. Keep an eye on this thing uh, above the earnings highs going into this week. And Amazon was phenomenal. Uh, Amazon was great. Uh, we saw we saw a huge call buying coming in uh, for the 18, 19, 20s uh, weeklies. And Amazon did not disappoint. Uh, definitely for one of the best moves of the day. Uh, definitely one of the best trades of the day. So it took out the 1734, took out the 1860, and traded all the way up to the Bollinger Band of uh, roughly 122. Huge, huge move on Amazon. And I believe that's it. I mean, it could be, yeah, it's, that's it. I mean, listen, everything popped. You know what I mean? Nobody's a genius. And nobody's uh, taking credit for this, you know, picking out these phenomenal moves. Everything is ripping, guys. Everything is ripping. AMD. I mean, look at these moves. And by the way, did you see, what was that stock? Um, what was that stock? It was... Um, the semiconductor. Uh, I, I don't trade the name often. Um, what was the semiconductor? It went from like 700 bucks. Avago, 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 right? This is the market we're in, folks. Okay. This is the market we're in. So when stocks go up 100 points, just because, again, this is not something that we're doing different. It's just the market rewarding us for our process, our patience, and give us things the ability to thrive in a very, very small vacuum. So guys, again, if you are planning to join us, you have three days to take advantage of the really, really uh, small investment in your in your life, man. Uh, again, if you fall in love with tech, if you fall in love with technical analysis uh, via the PS60 theory, the, the the technical analysis is going to fall in love with you. It's just a phenomenal, wonderful process that so many people are enjoying. If you have an opportunity to spend some time with us, kick the tires in the next thirty days, I think you can make up their, you know your mind for yourself, guys. God bless. 
Have a wonderful, wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Get some rest. Do something nice for yourself. Get healthy, right? It's all about health. It's all about happiness. And it's all about love. I'll talk to you guys all on Tuesday. Take care.